Hello all, welcome to part two or video two on how to set up camera Lucida and how to set up your iPad with its stand, the angle of that to your paper drawing surface so that you don't get parallax issues or distortion issues. And this is part two. Part one was showing you the manual mode of doing that using the image on the screen that you can see plus the printout. We've covered that in part one. If you haven't seen that, I strongly recommend you having a look at that. Please like and subscribe to this channel to get more of these sort of videos so that you can see how to set up and use Camera Lucida to its uh, best features. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is the automatic way of doing this. So the automatic way is instead of us having to manually use sliders and different controls to set up the parallax between the, between the, the angle of the iPad and the drawing surface, we can do it automatically. Again, it's a pretty similar routine, but this time a lot of it is done automatically. The first thing we have to do is we select the, the camera icon in the top left-hand corner here. And in the top left-hand corner, have a look at that button there. It says auto exclamation mark. Now if yours says get auto, what that means is that the automatic way of setting up Camera Lucida uh, is a paid for option. I think it's about four or five UK pounds or six dollars, something like that. It's very cheap. And if you don't want to go through the sort of hassle of using the sliders and doing it manually, the way I do it effectively, um, you can use the auto method, which is very straightforward and it, it works, it's good, it's fine. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to select get auto, that will then go off to the app store in the background and it will come up with a dialog box asking you that you're about to pay for the uh, automatic way of setting up Camera Lucida. So it's a paid for add-on to Camera Lucida. If you don't want the hassle of what I did on part one, then I strongly recommend that you buy it. Uh, I've got it. And um, the nice thing about it is you can set it up on all your um, Apple devices. You don't have to buy it for every device. So once you've bought it, what you would do is it might, uh, if say you've got two iPads and you and you 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 open up your other iPad with Camera Lucida on it, and it and then you think, well, I've paid for it, and it says Get Auto. What's going on? Well, it just means it hasn't been installed on that iPad. So what you need to do is, you know, obviously assuming it's the same person logging in, you need to press the Get Auto, go through the process as if you're buying it again, and before you come to pay for it. Uh, as I say, it's very cheap. Um, it will say, oh, you've already paid for this. Do you just want to install it on this device? So you just say yes. And then it sets it all up for you. And then when you go into the camera mode in the top left hand side here, you'll get what you can see here with mine, which is auto. Okay, so there's a process we need to do before we just press auto. You can't just press auto and magically something happens. What we have to do is in a similar way to printing out this and getting an image of this, we have to do the same for auto, except for the image looks very much different. Okay, so what we would do is we would go into the more button again up here and we would select the print save target. So when we select that, we can do the same as we did with the manual way. We can save to my camera roll and we can also print to the network printer because we need two copies of this. We need an image and we also need a printout in the same way as we did this. So when we save it to the camera roll, we'll have obviously in our photos on our, on our iPad, we'll have the picture of it. And when we print it to the network printer, we'll have a printout. If your iPad is not connected to a network printer, just open your photos in the iPad, send that image that you've just saved, send it to your computer and then print it out. Okay, I won't do that because I've already done it, but what you'll end up with is a printout that looks like this. Yeah, right, pretty, pretty drastically different to this. So they are completely different. It's important to remember, use this one for your manual mode and use this one for the automatic mode. So this has got a layout that helps Camera Lucida map colors and shapes to get the correct parallax and some text, etc. So as it says here, place, uh, print this image and place it on your drawing surface. This is my drawing surface. So right, I would place that on my drawing surface. There we are. Okay, now you can see we've got this 
you know, it's all out at the moment. We've got this parallax issue. So what we're going to do now is we are going to come back here and we are going to use the automatic way of setting up this parallax. Okay, so we've got our printout, place it in front of the iPad in the position it's roughly where we want it for painting and drawing. Portrait mode, just set up like that. That's all we have to do. Now, assuming you've paid for it and you've got your printout in front of you, the automatic mode takes all the hassle of using these sliders, etc., and you just press this button in the corner called auto. So I'm gonna press that button and it says working now. So what it's doing is it's using the camera and mapping your picture that you've got in front of you with the image that it knows that it needs to use for parallax. And now you can see that it's straightened up that image and what you've got on the on the drawing surface and it's auto corrected the parallax. So you can see that the text, camera lucida, etc., the copyright, the text is exactly set up in a nice parallax way. So you can say, would you like to visually confirm your camera's adjustment? Uh, I just say no. So that's that's the quick and easy way of doing it. So I've now set up a parallax. Now, in certain situations, it may not do it exactly right. So in that situation, we might have to do a little bit of manual adjustment as well, as well as using the automatic. So if I close that camera and I load this image here into Camera Lucida, so I go into my photos, go into my camera roll, load the image, so I've got that on the screen, so you can see it there. Um, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty good, you know, there it is. I've got my printout in front of me, and I've got the same image loaded on the screen. So I'm gonna do the same auto setup again. I'm gonna go into here, and I'm just going to press the auto button. Not gonna do anything else, just let that trundle away, try and sort itself out, and map the two. So it's close. You can see down here, this wording is not exactly right. Uh, the wording up here is not exactly right. Uh, so it says, auto alignment complete. Would you like to visually confirm your camera's adjustment? So now I'm gonna press the yes option. So you can see now I've got this image here and I've got this image here. So I can use this slider here to change the alignment somewhat. Now, when you're at this point, you can see that it's it's constantly drawing, uh, sorry, it's constantly using the camera to scan the image. You can see it slightly sort of pulsating in and out. And that's the camera trying to match the image here to the image that's in front of you. You can see that it's just constantly sort of pulsing away there. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to match the two. So there's the picture of a hare and a tortoise. So if I move it right the way over to the tortoise, what it's doing is it's trying to map those two images, but it's doing it very slowly. So it's gradually trying to improve its mapping from one to the other. Now, if I if I go right over to the other side, which is the hare, you can see it's it's doing it an awful lot quicker. So basically what, what we're doing here is we're trying to get both of these images mapped so that one is pretty much on top of the other. Now, if you're doing this and you kind of think, well, I'm not really sure, you know, it's miles out or I need some help, you can press the help button here and it will pop up this screen, alignment inspection help. Your current adjustment is being compared to the target. So it's comparing the two images. You can control the speed with the slider, which we've looked at, we've got the hair and the tortoise. Small differences, particularly at the edge of your screen, are normal. So like I said, when I, when I did it manually, don't get too obsessed with the edges. If the fading shows unacceptable differences, press done below and then use auto feature again after making sure your target is nice and flat on the drawing surface. Now, my piece of paper here is actually slightly um, slightly curved. It's quite a hot day here and it's, it's, it's slightly curved, so it's not as flat as I'd like it to be. So the first thing to do would be to make sure that's as flat as possible. So we press OK, we click Done. Now at this point, you would then decide whether or not this is acceptable and you could press the save button and carry on with it. If, if you're not happy with it, uh, you could go through the process again and you could do your auto, which we'll do. So I'll press auto again. And what it's doing now is it's, it's doing that mapping between the two images and it's saying, would you like to visually confirm? So when you visually confirm, you press yes. And we're back to this 
to um, we're back to this mode where it's basically showing you the image on the screen and your image that's printed out in front of you and you can look at the colors and the shapes and you can decide whether or not that is that is good enough so we'll press done and I'm not going to save that setting we'll just say okay to that so we'll just close the camera so let's just say that we are happy with that or we think we're happy what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my manual sheet and I'm going to load in the image of that from the camera roll. I'm going to see how far out it is. So again, I can sort of move this to here so they're roughly in the same alignment. So you can see from this that as far as I'm concerned, it's although it's square sideways and pretty much horizontally, it's not as good as I would want it. Or if I put it another way, if I do it manually, I feel that I can actually do it better. So this is the manual mode that we covered in part one, and this one is the automatic one. Now there could be lots of reasons why it doesn't quite work fantastically with the auto mode. And as far as I'm concerned, I always use the manual mode. I'm so used to it now, it literally takes me about 10 seconds. So all I normally do is we go into the camera and I would look at now looking at how I'm going to uh, adjust this image to map onto here. So I would just hit restore now because I've still got those settings. And you can see when I move this image together, they're the settings we saved in part one, which was the manual way of doing it. All I had to do was press restore and I'm back to how I was. So it's it's great. You know, there's no, there's no uh, alignment issues or anything. I'm perfectly where I was. When I did the automatic mode with this image, it was slightly out. Uh, would that affect my picture? I don't know, um, to be fair. Uh, I've, I've never, never done it that way. So um, I've always relied on the, on the manual mode. Uh, personally, I use the manual mode. It, it, it takes me literally seconds to do it and uh, I'm more than happy doing that. So that's what I would do. So some little quirks that you might uh, come across when you're doing this. If you do use the auto mode and then you want to use the manual mode, which is what I do, you would go back into your camera and you've suddenly lost those sliders at the bottom to do the control. Um, you know, in, in my case, it's it's pretty accurate because I just did the restore. So if I just do restore, I get I get back to my uh, to where I saved it when I did it manually. But if it was out and I wanted to adjust it, I can't see those controls anymore. So if you do get into this situation, it's because you've used the auto mode. Go back and press the more button up here, and then you've got this option down here which says show manual controls. So we press that, and you'll see that down the bottom here now we've got our manual controls back. So that's something that crops up from time to time and it's quite um, sort of off-putting because you kind of think, oh, I want to do it manually, but I haven't got those controls. So if you ever get to the point where you've used the auto, but you kind of think, well, I want to override it and it's not quite right and I want to do something, go back to your more mode and make sure you select show manual controls. At the moment it says hide manual controls because basically I've got them on the screen, but I could hide them if I wanted to, that's just a toggle. So that's pretty much it, that's how I set it up. So again, there's two modes, there's the manual mode with this piece of paper and image, and there's the automatic mode. The automatic mode, you have to pay extra for on top of the app, which is about four pounds, sort of six, four or five pounds, so about six dollars. Um, the, the automatic mode, you do the same as the manual mode, whereby you're just basically putting the piece of paper, the printout in front of the screen and going into your camera and pressing auto. That will then try and map the screen angles with the drawing surface. In practice, this is my opinion, um, you know, you do exactly as you feel you want to, but in my experience, um, although I think it works with the auto mode, I feel more confident using the manual mode because I know it's set exactly as I want it. And it's easy to save, uh, play about with your iPad, do your emails, do some graphic editing, whatever you want to do, come back, put it on your stand in the same position, press restore, bang, you're back to where you, 
back to where you were. That's that's what I do. Um, if it is out, for whatever reason, I just use the controls, get my image into the right position, move it about. You can move your image around, of course. Move it to where you want it, get your piece of paper where you want it. Make sure they're both pretty much aligned. If that looks like it's aligned, which it is, you know you're good to crack on and do painting. If it's slightly out, you just use your controls and adjust it. And that is it. There's no more to it than that. I think a lot of people have got themselves into a bit of a twist with it and they kind of feel confused, but it's always important to remember the basics of what you're trying to do. You're trying to map the angle of your uh, iPad to your drawing surface. And obviously those angles are not right angles. You know, the iPad is not at right angles to your drawing surface. So it depends on what angle you've got your uh, holder for your iPad. Once you've got that angle, just mark your holder so you always put it in the same position, but you might use a different device to stand your iPad up in. So you, you will have to get used to adjusting it. That is part of using the app. Literally, if you get used to doing it, it literally takes me about 10 seconds. The way I normally operate is I load my picture into to paint. I um, save it on the iPad. I, I load this picture, which I've always got on the iPad. I get my printout, which I have knocking around. I get the two together. I check that they are exactly in alignment. If not, I adjust it slightly. Once I'm happy, I come out. I load my picture that I want to paint, um, you know, whatever it happens to be. And I then get my drawing paper that I'm going to paint onto, put it in the right position, get my picture up, and then I'm ready to paint, take down my paper, press the draw button down here, and I'm ready to paint and I can zoom in and out and it all stays in proportion. And we're back to using the, the brilliance of Camera Lucida. So the setup mode is all up here. It's to do with the parallax. It's not complicated. Don't panic about it. Just get used to doing it. If you get used to doing it, every time you do a different painting, or every time you take the iPad off and put it back on just to check everything's in alignment, uh, you won't go wrong. You get so used to it that it becomes second nature. I just keep this knocking around and I always keep the picture of this on the iPad and it takes me five, 10 seconds just to tweak it each time if I need to. Apart from that, I don't need those and I can carry on drawing. It is, guys, really as simple as that. There's no point in getting uh, stressed about it. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this. Please, like and subscribe. I'm doing lots of these Camera Lucida type videos at the moment and uh, always open to suggestions in the comments. If you want to leave a comment about things that you're finding difficult or how to find these images. I, I like the urban art type images so I, I tend to sort of work out how I'm going to get these images using various tools and techniques. I use a lot of AI, uh, artificial intelligence to create um, images for me to paint. So have a think about any suggestions you might have or any problems with using the program, how you use filters, which I've covered in great detail in the in, in another video, you know, how you how you change perspective, how you use lots of the other um, controls on the system. Have a look at those videos and provide me with some feedback. Anyway, I will catch you on the next video.